And welcome to the second Facebook Live of the day for Q107. Uh, my name is John Garbett from Dare of the Morning on Q107. I'm super excited to be joined with the director and the producer of the new Rush documentary called Time Stand Still. Dale Heslop, Alan Weinrib, welcome to uh, the Q107 Facebook Live forum. And it's our first time on Facebook Live. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Hopefully it won't be your last because we have a, a lot of good time with it. And the good thing is, is as we do it, if you guys are up to it, people can comment while this is actually playing, and if there are any questions that you want to take from the people who are watching, we can. So, Luke, if, if anything good comes up, just yell it out, and if we want to answer it, we will. If not, man, Right? There you go. <laughs> how, how do you know questions are coming in? Luke can see it as it's, as, as it's filming. They'll All just right. pop up with comments. Awesome. So, Rush Time Stand Still comes out today in select theaters across Canada and the U.S., and then in some Canadian cities, it's, it's all weekend, right? But tonight is yeah. the night. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. I watched it uh, yesterday. I got an advanced copy. And as a Rush fan, I, I loved it. And I'm not just trying to be a Rush mark and say, you know, you guys are here. Though the movie was fantastic. <laughs> I watched it last night and working on Darren's in the morning and playing as much Rush as we do and having uh, a fondness for the band as I do. And seeing them last year on their final tour and everybody said, this is going to be their final tour. This is it. Until yesterday, watching your movie... It didn't feel final until I saw the credits start to roll. And it really hit me that, yeah, that's it. And I cried at I, I cried at the end. And it's not a joke. And I did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Thank you, Dale. Time. <laughs> and it, it is a real emotional roller coaster where I laughed at the beginning and I cried at the end. Was that the intention, guys? Or well, yeah, that was the intention. I mean, uh, it, it, the whole thing was emotional. When it started, we knew it was possibly going to be the last tour, but um, as it went on, it felt like, well, maybe it's going to go on, but as it got to closer to Los Angeles, it became very apparent that this was probably not going to continue. So, yeah, we all were very emotional in Los Angeles, that's for sure. Like, the air was very thick at the Forum. And for sure. Everybody was, it was, it was kind of odd. Yeah, it was actually. surreal. It was a very surreal night. I think that's how most people described it. And then, and then once we did the interviews with the guys, I think you know everything became just a little bit more concrete in terms of what was really going on. So we learned we learned a lot. We learned a lot during the course of the tour, and then and that you know you know shaped kind of how this thing. I think when we started this, you know, we had a lot of different ideas of what the doc could be. And, you know, we knew we had, you know, our field director, Miller, who was, you know, on the road with the band, you know, throughout the entire tour. So we knew we were going to have a lot of material to work with. And in L.A. was certainly a, a moment that, you know, we captured very well. And then once we did the interviews with the guys, it was like, okay, now we have something to shape here. And, and it took a little time. It took a little time to kind of figure out what, how it was going to flow and everything. But... Yeah, we, we, we purposely um, chose to let the tour end and let the guys go off and do stuff and then interview them in October, I think it was Getty and Alex, did the, them first. And, you know, they, they said lots of great stuff, you know, they wanted to continue and, you know, this, this and that about health and, and things. But it wasn't until we actually did the interview with Neil that when we went down, went back to LA to sit down with Neil at his man cave and uh, mm -hmm. listen to what he had to say, and it was like, okay, well, this does feel kind of final now. I was impressed that that you know you left the good, the bad, and the ugly in, and I thought with the interview with Neil, he was very, I, at least for me, it was a surprise. He didn't want to do this tour, right? Like he did not want to do this tour. And they all got together, and the three of them sat down, and, 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 Al, and Alex and Getty said they wanted to, and reluctantly, Neil did it. And I, I, was, I was surprised by that. He was very honest about, I'm done. Like, like this is it. And he, I, he was very raw in it. He, he, was. he was. He was very honest and, and very open and very, um, very positive. Mm -hmm. he, like he, that whole interview, our eyes just opened wide. Like, oh, Neil's on to other stuff. And, you know, the strange thing that happened when we did Getty and Alex, we interviewed them in this sort of dirty, dark uh, studio yeah. kind of down environment, mm -hmm. kind of rock and roll. We go to do Neil, we're in this very positive, you know, daylight, happy kind of environment. Are those all his cars that were behind him as he was doing it? <laughs> yes, yeah. they are. Wow, nice, like, no color, just like they're all silver. You got to see it. Pretty nice, decent cars he's got. Yeah. At the beginning, uh, they talked about, they went back to the beginning, Alex and, and, and Getty. The, the touring stuff at the beginning, going from the car to the station wagon to the van, 
was hilarious. Like, as, as a fan, you know, it, it almost seems that you guys were trying to do a thing where, you know, take them back from the beginning, let's, let's start from the beginning, and then build them up to the final at the end. And they were talking about, like, when Alex said that he got to sleep, it was his night to sleep on the luggage. Like, I was, I was rolling. I was laughing because it, it, it seemed like these guys were just so real. They were just so stoked to sleep on luggage. And, like, these are, like, one of the biggest bands in the world. And, like, it's luggage day! And it was just so great. Well, I think, you know, that, that was the, the point of the film. Like, you know, the, the previous doc did their history, right? We, 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 that territory was covered. But, but, but not a lot was discussed in terms of their lives as a touring band. And, and, and that really defined them more than anything else. So, so, so we knew there was still territory to explore in that, in that avenue. And we knew that there would be stories from the road that, you know, fans would want to hear. And, you know, everybody, you know, you just imagine, you know, rock stars, uh, they're all in planes, yeah. you know, and they're just flying around in the lap of luxury. And yeah. it wasn't always that way. And, 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 and things have changed, right, it, like dramatically in terms of, you know, like when they were on the road back in the old days, they were doing, you know, 300 days a year. Like, you know, it'd be very difficult for bands to even do that mm -hmm. these days just because, you know, the volume of bands that are out yeah. there. So, you know, that they, they as, as, you know, sort of as stated in the doc, that's where they built their, they built their reputation on the road. And it's like 50% Rush documentary and 50% about the fans as well. Absolutely. And you get to meet a lot of interesting people in the film from celebrities, and Randy Johnson was like one of my favorites. I'm not gonna ruin it, but he's hilarious, I thought, in there as well. And one of my favorite guys is, I call him super fan Ray. Mm. And Ray's got some stuff. Ray's got great and, stuff. And how do you outsource to, to kind of like meet all these people? And you know, you, you interview people at the shows, and then like kind of had one-on-ones with like a little bit more in depth with some others. Like, how did that sort of happen? Like, who got to make the cut? Well, well, I mean, that's, you know, I mean, you know, that was the benefit of having Miller on the road because, you know, once, once kind of word got out that, you know, that a documentary was being done, you know, they, they partially, you know, sought him out at the venues themselves. And, and he would report back to us and say, oh, my God, you wouldn't believe who I'm in. So when he met Ray, I think we got an email saying, I struck gold tonight, you gold. know. Because, you know, Ray, and Ray's, you know, a little bit legendary, uh, you know, for people who have already done. We hadn't heard about him before, but obviously, you know, if you see the doc, you know, that other, um, that Martin Popoff had already been enlightened to Ray, and, and Ray's, you know, manifesto of his collection, um, you know, was certainly a bit legendary. So, you know, that, that was Miller kind of digging in, and, and other, you know, again, fans that we kind of connected with through the course of the tour itself would highlight us, oh, you should talk to this person, mm -hmm. you should talk to that person. And, you know, we did it as much as we could to get them all in the, in, in the, in the dock itself. But it, it was very challenging. You kind of have to pick and choose, you know, which ones are, are kind of fitting our storyline, which ones really kind of stand out. And, and that's why very specifically in the, in the credits, I make sure that I, I thank all those fans who took the time to stop with us, tell us stories, and and you know, and and sincerely regret that we could not fit everyone in the in the dock. Yeah. But, but Dave Bedini, the writer, um, actually, uh, he had met some people, and, and mm -hmm. it was through uh, Jillian at RushCon, and then another Rush uh, fan site, and was introduced to all these different fans, and sort of went through the list of them, and he picked a whole bunch of people. Yeah. And then we got together and we go, oh, that guy sounds cool. She sounds cool. They, oh, they're cool. So there was there was a whole bunch that were chosen, but in the end, and and we actually interviewed a lot. Mm -hmm. there, there was there was a lot of, of fans that sadly didn't make the cut. You know, we sort of we've got all the the fans at the shows and stuff, but the deep dives, as we call them, the, you know, the Jillians and the Georges, and uh, they those are the ones that sort of closed the loop when it came to telling the story of the fans. Yeah, it uh, it was amazing because they were all all the stories were different, but all you know came back to one you know, trio, which is Rush, and uh, I've never heard of RushCon, and Jillian is is the head of RushCon, and they did one, in one scene, they were at the Hard Rock for sure, because I recognize the Hard Rock, and they did one for the last show in LA. Yep. Is RushCon going to continue on, do you guys know? Because it seemed kind of cool, like, I didn't know about it, I, like, I go. Well, I mean, they've done 16 years of it, and, you know, I, I, I would imagine they yeah. will find reasons to continue on. I mean, tonight is a part of a RushCon event okay. as well, so yep. the... The premiere is, you know, sort of the kickoff to, the, you know, a current RushCon that's going to be happening in Toronto all weekend long. So, 
yeah, I, you know, I, you know, we can't speak on behalf of them, but yep. I, I don't think they'll let it go that easily. <laughs> I, I think they'll find an excuse to get together. Yeah, nice. you know, and I think as Jillian said, it, it, you know, they come to to concerts to do that group therapy yes, thing. Yes, for sure. Or at least get out of their parents' basement. As she yeah. Has it. But, yeah. Um, I, I, I mean, I think the interesting thing is when you go to a Rush show and you see all the Rush fans there, they are, they are a family. They're all, they love seeing each other. They, they hug, they, yep. I don't know you and I just met you and I see that you have a Rush shirt on, I must love you. Yeah. You know, so they love, they love hanging out together. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, there was a gentleman, I believe he was from Argentina, mm -hmm. and then the gentleman from Scotland, and they made their sort of own sort of bond, and mm -hmm. you're right. And, and, and uh, Jillian said in, in the doc, um, if I'm in a group and somebody walks in the door, they have a Rush shirt on, I gotta go for a sec. And I have to go, because there's that connection between Rush fans, not only because like, you know, I love them because not only because of the music, but you know, they're from Toronto and they're Canadian and I wanna wave that flag, but all over, you know they're 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 loved everywhere, and I think somebody said that like you know the the jock isn't a Rush fan, but the p guy who's you know putting together model planes and like you know he, they're the Rush fans, and and it's great. So we're here with Dave Haslip and, and Alan Weinrib. Dale. The, Dale, I apologize. Dale Haslip and Alan Weinrib, the director and the producer. Rush time stands still. It opens tonight in Toronto, and then there's a VIP after party uh, at uh, the, at the Hard Rock. You guys will be there. We sent some Q107 listeners. We had a, a Rush winning weekend over the weekend, so we're excited to do that. Anything else, guys? You want you want to let the people know about the movie at all? No, go see it. It's awesome. <laughs> like, it, if if you're it. just a music fan, you need you need to go see it uh, tonight. And it's playing at multiple cities, multiple c cinemas. Uh, I've got a question sure. uh, from the Facebook Live video uh, from Ryan. He's wondering uh, if it's going to be available for purchase afterwards. I was just going to say, and the, and the DVD release is on November 18th. DVD release November 18th. Yeah. Cool. Yep. And then everyone else is just saying they're super stoked to see this movie. Awesome. I'll do one little thing. and The production yeah. company, and this is Fadu. <laughs> Fadu Productions. <laughs> Fadu Production. Awesome. Corey okay. said as we love the office. Say Fadu. Fadu. <laughs> Dale, appreciate it. I'm Alan, yep. thanks guys. Thanks so much. Time stands still tonight in Toronto and all over the world.